I will request Dr. Kim to share his uh, uh, PowerPoint so that uh, Dr. Sandosh, please can you take over and uh, yeah, sure, 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 from here, yeah. Oh, thank you so much. So, welcome, Dr. Kim. Hi. <laughs> Sir, can you share your screen? Okay. Uh, can you see? Yeah, we, we can see your screen. Thank you very much. Okay. When we start? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Now start. Can I start now? Yes, sir. Okay. Good afternoon and good night, uh, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Here, Korea is 10:30 uh, p.m. Uh, uh, last week uh, we discussed about the endoscopic uh, discectomy procedures, but uh, uh, now endoscopic uh, spinal surgery developed so much, and uh, uh, it needs some develop more and more. And because of that, uh, today we will discuss of the endoscopic uh, spinal treatment of the advanced course of the decompression and, and intervallic fusion. Uh, firstly, I thank you to uh, give a chance to uh, lecture in ESIPS to mention large and uh, Santosh Tripe and Sanjay Sharma and uh, 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 Kalashi Kotari. Thank you so much. And, uh, uh, and uh, Mm, it is uh, my great pleasure to give a lecture to here, and uh, I heard that there so many attendees interested in the, uh, uh, some, the learning of the endoscopic spine surgery and uh, treatment. Uh, yeah, this is my curriculum vitae and disclosure. Uh, today we will discuss about the endoscopic decompression, not only uh, lumbar, uh, but also Thoracic and cervical together, and uh, uh, and we'll discuss ab uh, about the, for the next step of the endoscopic fusion surgery. Uh, firstly, we checking the why we should uh, perform the endoscopic spinal procedures. This photo is taken by me from last week in uh, Japan. Uh, yes, we already know, know uh, it is very well known that uh, with the development of health science, uh, the uh, people's mean life increased so much, especially in Korea. Uh, the people's mean life uh, is uh, near over eight years because of that, uh, the uh, degenerative disease is very uh, hard issue and for the health of the people's life. And it's mean that uh, in Korea and uh, some of, uh, so many countries, uh, so uh, mean life increased so much, and also the spinal, uh, this especially degenerative spinal disease increased abruptly, and it needed some uh, treat uh, that patient more uh, uh, critically and more uh, uh, sufficiently to take a uh, sufficient their life. Yes, before time we uh, met, uh, for example, in my last 20 years, um, uh, pe uh, people's life of Korea also less than 70 years. Because of that time, uh, the uh, main focus is uh, lumbar disc pathology in, uh, for the degenerative spine. But with the uh, increasing uh, reach, reach to near eight years, uh, especially in Korea, the uh, stenosis increased so much because of that uh, nowadays, the uh, minimally invasive uh, treatment for the spinal, uh, degenerative spinal is uh, needed uh, so much. And uh, uh, fortunately, uh, the endoscopic spinal pressures for lumbar disc uh, pathology can sufficiently uh, treat it before time. But uh, uh, nowadays, uh, with the increase uh, uh, the um, uh, degenerative spinal stenosis and degenerative spinal instability, it need uh, more development of the endoscopic treatment and postures. 
Uh, this photo taken uh, by uh, last two, uh, uh, two weeks ago uh, uh, from uh, Nepal uh, Spine Society with uh, uh, Dr. Pao there. Uh, for example, uh, like this, <coughs> Dr. Menshi and Dr. Uh, I hope to question to Dr. Santoshi and Dr. Uh, Bayapa Pao there and some of the spine surgeons. If you met like meet like this patient, uh, so severe stenosis and, and eight-year-old male patient. Will you try the, the operation or uh, not? Uh, con uh, con we recommend the conservative treatment. Menishi, what kind of treatment will you uh, try? Dr. Bayapa? Yes. <laughs> Uh, before time, uh, like this case is not uh, very difficult to operation in patient. Yes, because uh, this patient needs uh, general anesthesia and uh, you know, some uh, big incision. And because of that, uh, some, uh, the, the operation risk is so high. And if you met, uh, meet like this patient, eight, one year male patient with uh, paraparesis, with uh, uh, ligament. No, cash by the ligament patient. What kind of treatment do you do choose that for this patient? And also, if you met, meet uh, this patient, 86 year male patient with uh, quadriparesis patient, if you meet like these three patients, will you choose the operation or not uh, give up the uh, treatment? What kind of treatment will you choose? This is a very important question because of that. Uh, I already mentioned that uh, nowadays, uh, not only Korea, so many country uh, people uh, will meet and uh, already met uh, like this patient. Because of that, uh, if uh, don't give up for this patient, if uh, we, uh, if uh, like a surgeon or uh, pain, uh, uh, pain doctors and uh, as a do spine doctors, if we give up for this patient, uh, our patient will uh, lead to unhappy life, life because uh, they, uh, uh, with the uh, increasing new life, the patient still have a chance of uh, enjoy their life. But if they cannot treat sufficiently, uh, they we will meet unhappy life because of that uh, development of the endoscopic decompression and fusion surgery should uh, 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 going to the uh, development. This is rationally. Fortunately, last uh, several uh, uh, last years, uh, endoscopic uh, spinal uh, treatment uh, developed so much because of that. Uh, not, last week we discussed about the second generation, but uh, nowadays uh, the endoscopic decompression and fusion uh, uh, surgery developed sufficiently, and we more and more will develop uh, for the uh, health of the people's life. And uh, in uh, my last uh, year paper of the neurospine, uh, I, uh, we, uh, Jeffrey Young and me, uh, classified this uh, generation as a disectomy generation and uh, stenosis with or without instability generation of the endoscopic sp uh, spinal surgery. It's mean that now, nowadays we going on the generation of endoscopic decompression and uh, treatment of instability generation. And also, fortunately, uh, yeah, last week I'm uh, I I'm told that uh, in my uh, clinical cases, it's mean that the uh, doctors experts about the endoscopic uh, spinal treatment, we will uh, we can treat more than eighty five percent of patient for the degenerative spinal disease. It's mean that the, the patient have more and more chance to take up more good uh, return to their normal life. And uh, it's made, uh, fortunately now this uh, can possible more than 90% of degenerative spinalis can return to the endoscopic spinal surgery. Uh, yes, but uh, uh, anyway, we, uh, 
uh, doing the endoscopic spine surgery, we always uh, keep in mind that the what is the rational layer of the, uh, this process. Uh, today we will discuss about the rational layer of the endoscopic decompression and fusion. Yeah, last week, uh, I, I talked that the rational layer of the endoscope disectomy is not only the uh, uh, early recovery and uh, minimally invasive uh, treatment, that, but also there are less damage the anatomical structures and preserve the motion segment and preserve the neurological stream and the return to normal life. But uh, uh, today we will discuss what is the rational layer of the endoscopic uh, decompre decompression and the fusion surgery. First, we will be checking the, uh, the uh, uh, biomechanics of the disc pathology and stenosis pathology. Uh, for example, we, uh, as an endoscopic spine surgeon, uh, some of the doctors, uh, they uh, uh, still follow the transferal now. And, uh, and they they talking that uh, they can treat the all pathology from the transformer. But uh, my opinion is some different because of that. There is a pathophysiology of the disc, uh, mainly some compression of uh, nerve, not uh, related to the instability. But in, in the spinal stenosis, there are also main pathology is instability. And with the uh, because of that. Uh, uh, around the uh, death structures of the nerve, uh, there have so many uh, you know, structures in growth to around the uh, the ner uh, nerve, uh, dry and nerve. Because of that, uh, we should decompress uh, that uh, pathology sufficiently with the preservation of the segmental uh, function, the mo segmental motion. That is a, because of that, uh, uh, in my opinion, the uh, disectomy and um, stenosis is completely different biomechanics, and also it needs completely different treatment of the disc pathology and stenosis pathology. And also, uh, there uh, in the spinal stenosis, there have uh, some another patho pathophysiology. Uh, we knowing that uh, some central stenosis, uh, there have, uh, uh, I already mentioned, they are have uh, basically related to the segmental instability. There are some, oh, sorry, some, oh, sorry. Some ingress of the, uh, some thickening of the ligamentum flabum and osteopite and some around structures uh, can uh, compress the nerve. But in the, uh, there have some another uh, biomechanical instability of the lateral wedging instability. For example, in the foramenal stems or some degenerative scoliosis patient, uh, uh, they have a, uh, 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 they have instability with the, uh, not only center but also some uh, frame, uh, some one side uh, of the lateral uh, wedging side. For example, like this, uh, if uh, the patient have uh, some uh, one side of the uh, instability, the uh, this side have uh, will have uh, some more thickened of the ligament flabum that make uh, some uh, lateral wedging instability and form stenosis. Uh, this uh, biomechanics is also very important because of that. Uh, in this situation, if we uh, manage manipulate this uh, unstable side, there also uh, have a more chance of the aggression of the instability in the same side because of that. Uh, um, uh, Dr. mentioned, Raji already mentioned that uh, we in Korea and uh, me and so many Korean doctors uh, try uh, uh, so many contralateral approach uh, for uh, uh, only uh, decompress uh, decompress that side uh, sufficiently, but also to take a uh, sufficient to preserve the already unst unstable segment, and also. Uh, uh, during the last several years, uh, endoscope decom uh, uh, decompressive uh, surgery also developed some, uh, somewhat from, firstly from the open surgery and after then microscopic decompression, after then tubular decompression. Because of that, uh, so many tubular uh, surgeons asked 
uh, uh, to me and ask an uh, endoscopic uh, spine surgeon, why are you uh, performing the endoscopic compression? That is, uh, they they uh, talking that that is same uh, like a tula and uh, endoscope procedures. But in my opinion, uh, there are also some uh, uh, more advantage in the endoscopic decompression. For example, first decompression is uh, that uh, uh, endoscopic uh, procedures can more mobile and more angled. It's mean that uh, can approach more deepest point. And the more uh, uh, another uh, advantage is this. Uh, it's mean that uh, in the, the uh, tubular decompression with the, in, in spite of the use uh, assist of the microscope, the uh, viewing point is here. But endoscopic uh, procedures of the viewing point is more deepest, deepest and also uh, water irrigation can make a uh, uh, operation field, field more clear because of that uh, endoscope decompression can uh, decompress more clearly uh, and to the more deepest point and the more detailed work is possible with the preservation of the uh, bilateral uh, segment uh, stability. Because of that, uh, the rational of the endoscopic compression will like this. This patient uh, taken one day after operation, uh, after endoscopic compression. You can see here, uh, there, uh, our, the first we're thinking that uh, the rational will be the uh, sufficient decompression, but also there, uh, we should take uh, some Bilateral uh, facet joint uh, preservation sufficiently, and you can you see here the bilateral muscle preservation you know, completely. It's mean that uh, uh, with the uh, un, uh, endoscope view, we can uh, uh, manage the uh, uh, pathophysiology more sufficiently without damage around the structures. They can. Uh, preserve the functional segment more sufficiently and can uh, help uh, decreasing the chance of instability and aggravation. This will be uh, the, uh, the real rationality of the endoscopic decompression. Uh, firstly, sufficient neural decompression, and second, preserve the functional segment, especially by rectal facet uh, joint, and minimizing the paraspinal muscle damage, and less neural retractive, and increase the normal life activity. There, there will be the rationality of the endoscopic decompression. But also, you can see here the uh, this. Uh, Case showing the rationality of the contractor approach. Why we approach the contractor in the endoscopic decompression? Yeah, because the, I already mentioned that so many Korean doctors already tried the contractor approach. You can see here, if we met meet like this patient with a severe spinal stenosis and uh, uh, lateral recess tennis with the uh, foraminal stenosis and extra foraminal stenosis. If we met, if we cannot uh, doing the contractor approach and uh, not uh, manage this pathology is simultaneously, the patient need a more big operation like uh, some open surgery and fusion surgery and sometimes some uh, bilateral combination of the central, uh, central and extra foraminal a plus plan approach together. But if we can doing the contractor approach and can decompress this pathology sufficiently, it, uh, we cannot doing like this procedure, but uh, we can doing only one process of the contractor approach can, and then you can suppose operatively uh, sufficient decompression of the central no, but also their frame one and extra frame is possible. It's mean that uh, in spite of the uh, unstable uh, lateral reaching uh, scoliosis uh, patient, uh, the patient uh, have only a for, uh, uh, nerve uh, compression pathology. We can uh, treat the patient without a fusion surgery because yes, uh, fusion surgery is very, very good, but. Uh, 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 fusion surgery, we already will know that uh, they, they have a uh, need uh, some uh, risk of operation because uh, mm -hmm. it's a, a big op a big operation, and also chance of uh, uh, adjacent uh, segment problem because of that. If we can treat 
uh, without uh, fusion for this patient, the patient will take real uh, uh, good results for uh, his clinical results. And also, what is the, and uh, so many doctors also ask uh, about the, that uh, this case is nowadays. Uh, so, so many doctors, of Korean doctors, they try the endoscopic compression for the thoracic pathology of the spinal stenosis, uh, like uh, some uh, ossification of ligament problem and some other uh, stenosis pathology, but. Uh, some of doctors ask why you try that operation. The patient can treat it with uh, open surgery yeah, and uh, can take a good result. But uh, I think that maybe there also endoscopic decompression for thoracic pathology have uh, some rationale like this. Uh, actually, endoscope view is more clear and we can uh, approach more deepest point because of that uh, we can decompress uh, the pathology more sufficiently, and then also we can approach more deepest point uh, with the less uh, neural retractive, uh, retractive approach. You can see here this patient with uh, some uh, paraparesis after one year, uh, the patient clinical result and MR result is very nice. Because of that, the rationale will be the more deepest, more detailed using the endoscopic uh, view and uh, can doing the sufficient decompression in the uh, uh, pathology. And also, surgical, also now there's so many doctors try the endoscopic uh, spinal surgery. In Korea, we mainly approach from the posterior because uh, we already know knowing that uh, some anterior approach has uh, some digest uh, complication if, if, if we met because of that. Uh, uh, especially endoscope pressures also uh, can give a good result, but uh, anterior approaches are some only uh, limited indication, and also if uh, met some complication, there is a very digest uh, complication to the patient because of that. Uh, now this in Korea, so many doctors try the posterior approach rather than the anterior approach, and also. Uh, open surgery of the endoscopy can doing the or uh, treatment can possible uh, for degenerative pathology, but they have uh, so many complications like this because of that we hope to decreasing these path uh, complications. And also in the endoscopic process, especially not only rumba uh, but also thoracic and but also surgical, more advantage will be like. It, it, with this, it is a very movable because of that uh, uh, can approach more deepest point with the preservation of facet, and uh, this is very important to some mo mobility of the uh, 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 spinal endoscope compared to the open or microscope or, or tubular. Uh, I think that it, it, this is a real rational of the endoscopic cervical decompression. You can see here with the, uh, the uh, sufficient decompression can preserve the first sufficient tree. But also we should checking the what is the rationality of the endoscopic fusion surgery because of that uh, uh, fusion surgery is still ongoing process uh, because of that we should found, finding that the what is the rationality. In my clinical uh, experience I have I think that maybe I have more more than 100 cases, and uh, take uh, took uh, some my rationale of the endoscope fusion. Um, uh, the rationale of the endoscope fusion is not only minimally invasive but, uh, approach, but also uh, they have a very uh, typical uh, advantage compared to the open surgery. First is uh, preserve the end part. This is very, very important to preserve the substance and the, the increase the fusion night. And also this height restoring is very, very nice. I'm, I'm now preparing the paper for this uh, issue. And also because of the, the, this in, uh, this current restoration is very nice because it has uh, some chance of corrective uh, treatment for the uh, scoliosis and some 
hypertic patient. I will show some of my patients, some my cases. And anyway, nowadays, uh, this is my two paper, uh, some another paper. And uh, now there's so many uh, doctors uh, writing the, some paper for endoscopic compression and uh, they uh, talking that uh, they uh, weak uh, endoscopic decompression can take a good clinical result, but it need a more study and study and paper. And uh, now we will go into some um, anatomical consideration of the endoscopic compression and fusion. First, we will checking the some uh, endoscopic uh, lumbar spinal stenosis. Uh, uh, me and Dr. Ji Young Kim, we uh, now uh, nowadays we prepare uh, uh, preparing the paper for this issue. Uh, we already knowing that uh, some ligand problem made by outer layer and inner layer, and also if extra and contra side because of that, the ligand problem made by four uh, four a piece. But the uh, outer layer is uh, looks like very simple, and uh, there is. Uh, a very easy detect in the operation field uh, or endoscope view, but inner layer is very uh, complex and very difficult. You can see here uh, this layer uh, of the inner layer, uh, inner layer uh, from starting from the uh, same side of the interspinous space and go to the contract, uh, go to the foramen from the uh, upper part of the shikratika process and water border of the uh, pedicle lower margin. Uh, and also a ligand problem of the inner layer uh, attached to some cranial part of the uh, upper uh, lamina of the lower border of the upper lamina. Uh, it's meaning that uh, if we approach it from, uh, from the contractor side, we should checking this anatomy. If uh, we, because of the endo, endoscope central decompression only decompresses here, because of that, uh, if we doing the decompression to here and here and here, but, uh, and uh, sometimes uh, approach to here, but, and also we, if we met, uh, meet the contractor actually, we believe that uh, there is sufficient, but unfortunately, there is not sufficient. You should check in this anatomy. We, or, uh, if we decompress the contractor uh, foramen, uh, we should remove this anatomy ligament problem completely. That is, they will take a sufficient uh, 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 contractor from pathology. Uh, but also, we should check in the uh, uh, the anatomical variation of the ligament problem of the inner layer and the outer layer. There is some all different from the level and uh, and uh, the age. We will, uh, me and Dr. Jiang Kim will uh, uh, preparing the paper and we will publish it. Uh, they submit, uh, we will submit the paper uh, to the journal. And also in the thorax, thorax main pathology of the uh, degenerative spine will be the uh, uh, ossification of the ligand problem, but uh, they're also related to the inner layer of the ligand problem, um, uh, like this anatomy. Because of that, uh, uh, first we ducking to the, the thoracic three point, we will drill to here, but uh, there is not sufficient. If we hope to decompress the Thoracic or ossification of ligament problem, we should uh, drilling this point O and uh, contractor side also main, uh, should make this point near to pedicle. Uh, it's meaning that the, it also meaning that the, if we drill like this uh, boundary uh, of the uh, bony structures, we can take out the uh, ossification of ligament problem or uh, uh, ligament problem by one piece without them open the uh, drawer area. And also in the cervical, cervical also have uh, some uh, typical characteristics and uh, they're uh, possible to uh, approach to anterior and posterior. But uh, I already mentioned that in the anterior, there have some 
uh, very import, uh, uh, important uh, organs like a carotida tree and some uh, vertebra tree and some sopolis and some uh, larynx. Because of that, that, that have uh, uh, some chance of uh, uh, digestal damage to here because of that nowadays in Korea and me. Uh, uh, like a posterior approach. Uh, fortunately, posterior approach of the open surgery uh, performed so many doctors, but uh, open surgery need uh, need uh, some so, so some destruction of bony uh, uh, muscle structures and ligament structures. Then also can make uh, some kyphosis of the. Uh, cervical after operation, but in the endoscopic posture approach, the, the muscle damage is uh, very, very small because of that. Uh, in my clinical experience, uh, the kyphosis happiness uh, near uh, not happen. Uh, I'm also will prepare that paper for uh, in the future, and also. Uh, there have in the cervical there have uh, several uh, several points of the anat anatomical consideration. First thing is, is that uh, these two uh, nerve structures actually this uh, nerve structures is uh, motor point motor segment and sensory segment of the uh, cervical uh, nerve like uh, some dorsal ganglion. But uh, usually that divided the two uh, nerve segments because of the uh, that uh, maybe if, uh, beginner the uh, first exposed that, that uh, nerve structures uh, they sometimes some confusion and sometimes sometimes some mistake uh, some uh, catch the nerve because uh, because uh, uh, sometimes uh, make uh, some uh, damage to the nerve. I also have uh, some experience because we, we should always checking in the cervical the cervical have uh, made by two nerve root. Actually, there, there is not two nerve root. One nerve root divided two motor and uh, sensory segment. And also in the cervical of the posterior approach, there also uh, important structures is uh, segmental anatomy, uh, no, no vertebral artery. Uh, vertebral artery also some uh, more uh, distance from the lower part of the uh, cervical, more close to, to the um, nerve in the upper part. That this uh, anatomical configuration also published the, in Neurospine by me. And uh, for example, in the cervical upper part, the uh, vertebral artery is very close to the uh, V point, but the uh, lower part is very uh, uh, distance from the uh, V point. There also but you can see here, if we sometimes, uh, you can see here this nerve, this cadaver uh, image. But uh, segmental artery is very close to the nerve because of that, if we not ca catch this segmental artery, uh, uh, vertebra, sorry, vertebral artery, it may uh, sometimes uh, danger to the, damage to the uh, vertebral artery. And also, some ana another anatomical consideration is this. Yeah. Uh, recently, my paper uh, accepted in World Neurosurgery, that paper uh, writing to a uh, safe route for cervical approach. Uh, this paper uh, uh, writing with uh, Dr. Pang Hong. And uh, our conventional approach, our posterior uh, decom uh, decompression is ducking to V point and open the facet and uh, rejection of nerve. Because of that, uh, sometimes it damages the nerve and more higher chance of nerve damage. But if we open the, uh, that uh, point more widely and uh, approach uh, without the rejection of the nerve to the uh, target point, that will give the more safe uh, the operation. And also in my clinical experience of using this technique, the nerve damage decreased so much. And uh, uh, but also uh, this approach can only approach to around the here, but this approach can possible more deepest point is possible. Yes, this anatomy can make uh, can see the this pedicle and the this V point. Yeah, and we naming this trans point, but uh, 
sorry, uh, nowadays uh, name changed PPPV, partial pedicolectomy, partial vertebrectomy can make uh, this wide working space and can nerve retention is possible and uh, can approach more deep point without uh, nerve, uh, nerve damage. Like this. And uh, after operation, you can see here the uh, after the compression of trans V point, but this but uh, this image is showing the uh, partial uh, pericolectomy and partial uh, vertebrectomy and making uh, sufficient decompression and more sufficient uh, sufficient approach to the target point. And but you can see here this image uh, post operative three D image showing that uh, this trans V point and, and this. The yeah, PPPV approach, it. but the facet joint uh, preservation is uh, near similar. It's meaning that uh, uh, in spite of the sufficient compression and sufficient uh, exposure, uh, the uh, nerve dam uh, damage is uh, decreased so much, and the facet joint preservation is uh, near same. In the uh, anatomical consideration of the lumbar interval fusion, also we should check in that because of that. Uh, Firstly, endoscopic lumbar interval fusion of, uh, starting from the transcambine approach. Uh, and also, uh, after then, recently, and me and some of the doctors, and uh, they starting trans uh, approach. This is the uh, same with a tr conventional trans approach. And some doctors are using the near similar to the conventional posterior lumbar interval fusion approach. But, uh, yes, uh, some so many doctors they already trying the trans cambin approach, but um, yes, it's a very easy to approach and can make a good clinical result. But uh, in my uh, opinion, I I think a different because I'm uh, not uh, try this trans cambin approach because uh, I. Already experienced uh, uh, transcambine approach using the uh, microscope. Uh, the clinical result is very nice, but there has some limitation and some uh, uh, problem. First limitation is that uh, cannot manage the central pathology sufficiently. And second uh, limitation is cannot manage the uh, end plate sufficiently. And some another uh, Problem is that uh, it has a more higher chance of the dorsal root ganglion damage. Actually, dorsal root ganglion damage not only related to the dorsal root ganglion, that, but also it related to the sympathetic uh, uh, neuropathic uh, damage also can relate to this. Um, because of that, the, the patients have uh, some sympathetic dysfunction, uh, neuropathy, then make uh, some disaster to the patient. Because of that, uh, uh, I like the conventional transformer approach. Because using this approach, we can uh, manage the uh, central uh, pathology together, and then the, some uh, manage the end uh, end preparation sufficiently. But uh, this approach limitation is that uh, not easy to manage the. Uh, Facet joint, uh, some inferior process. You can see here the inferior process and superior process. But fortunately, recently, so good uh, endoscopic drill interest in the field, clinical field, because of that, uh, the main amount of the, uh, uh, this inferior process and superior process is not difficult. Uh, for example, I'm always uh, ask and request to my fellows, uh, fellows and uh, training doctors uh, should uh, train the endoscopic drill that we, uh, will give more chance to you to treat your patient by the endoscopically. Uh, uh, not, uh, not only some lumbar interval fusion, but also endoscopic compression from lumbar cervical to thorax. Endoscope theory is very important.
uh, okay. Uh, after uh, finishing the third car consideration, we have a discussion time, maybe 10, 10 minutes. It's okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Now we should be checking the surgical consideration and the uh, uh, technical consideration of the endoscopic compression and fusion. Nowadays in the uh, field, uh, there have uh, actually two kind of the uh, endoscopic decompression technique. One is uh, inside out and one is outside in. Actually, some different name is one is uh, over the top, one is the, uh, under the top. Uh, uh, you, inside out the or under the top technique, firstly, uh, docking the working channel to the ligament problem, and then some uh, uh, exposure that area, and uh, firstly, cutting the ligament problem and exposure the ligament problem, that after then follow the decompression to the ligament problem. Uh, but uh, over the top technique is uh, firstly during the outside or after then finally take out the some sound, uh, some sound, uh, some Please, sound. Uh, everybody, mute your mic. I request okay. everybody to mute mic, please. Yes, over over the top technique, first we drill around the ligament problem and take out the ligament problem finally. But uh, actually, inside out technique, under the top technique is more easy and uh, learning is more easy and also that also good clinical result and also with the development of the endoscope punch and the decompression is sufficient can possible but uh, there is a uh, unfortunately inside our technique uh, have uh, some limitation in the severe spinal stenosis and thoracic pathology and cervical pathology but over the top technique, it can possibly indicate uh, only all pathology of the uh, spinal stem cell, uh, not, uh, not only severe cent uh, central lumbar stenosis, but also uh, uh, stenosis pathology of the thoracic and cervical. But unfortunately, over the top technique, uh, outside in technique is uh, not easy to learn. Um, it need a, and also it need a, some skill of the endoscope drill because of it. I'm always ask, requesting and teaching the endoscope drill technique to uh, my fellows. And, and also bipotal technique is near similar to the uh, outside in technique. Uh, because the, I like this over the top technique. Yes, we firstly we uh, see this image of the uh, 80 year male patient with serious spinal stenosis and thoracic uh, stenosis and subcutaneous stenosis with uh, more than 80 year male patient. Firstly, I I uh, request uh, uh, I request, uh, uh, ask to manage and my apartment what will you do this treatment for uh, this patient? But if we have a uh, uh, experience and expert to the endoscope decompression, especially outside in approach, we can manage this or patient can possible. It like this in the uh, lumbar uh, over the top, thoracic over the top, and cervical over the top can possible. For example, because of that, uh, nowadays we can possible to. Uh, indicate the endoscopic decompression in the lumbar area and the post-operative MRI, but also can possible in thorax post-operative MRI, and the cervical also can possible in spite of very, very old age can possible. And also this technique already published in the paper, like me and Chris Siete, Dr. Uh, Fujito already published this uh, uh, the same technique of the, this outside in technique. Maybe this uh, photo taken by me, maybe 2016 from Kazakhstan, Astana. Uh, they uh, give a, a dancing to the attendee doctors. You can see a very uh, 
good dancing and beautiful dancing and very skillful dancing. But uh, yes, and uh, endoscopic spine surgery and surgery or uh, medical treatment also same. Uh, first, we ask to uh, so many doctors say to me how to learn the endoscopic spine surgery, how to become an expert in endoscopic spine surgery. Unfortunately, uh, it needs so simple learning. Uh, like this photo, they uh, have so many times to learn the skill and to uh, uh, decreasing the effort and make like this beautiful photos. It, it's uh, like endoscopic spine surgery, also uh, same with the treatment, uh, learning and uh, training and ex uh, experience that make a, a good uh, a photos like this. Now we will discuss about the technical consideration of endoscopic decompression. Yes, uh, I already mentioned that uh, I am doing the outside in approach of the endoscopic compression because of that uh, today I will discuss about the endoscopic outside in approach. The endoscopic outside in approach, firstly, ducking the working channel to uh, here and the drill cranial and drill caudal and over the contractor side, uh, upper and uh, cranial and caudal decompression. But uh, for the beginner, the drilling is very can possible because first we checking this point to follow this line. Uh, drilling is not difficult. Uh, but uh, for uh, for beginner, most difficult point is uh, to overcome the contractor side. You know, we there is have uh, some in, uh, indicator uh, and also. Uh, in the endoscopic compression, there have uh, two approach technique. One is uh, some translamin approach. One is sublamin approach. Uh, especially uh, to approach to the contractor side, uh, I I'm always uh, recommend to sublamin approach. Sublamin approach first ducking here and there and over the contractor side. Here we can see the some anatomical landmark mm -hmm. from uh, here. We can check this spinolamina angle, spinolamina angle of the cranial and caudal by the endoscopically. <laughs> For example, uh, firstly, ducking point here can see the like uh, uh, this V shape, and also we checking this spinolamina angle and cranial caudal spinolamina angle, and through this point we can see the another V point from the this area and some. Another point of the V, v shape of the cranial coda. Uh, this uh, make this indicates the midline and uh, some indicates uh, some uh, over the contractor side. Then uh, drill like this and can possible. Sometimes drill to the contractor lateral recess for a month and extra for a month. Because of that, uh, uh, endo uh, endoscope decompression and endoscopic surgery, the drilling is very important and you should uh, prepare the good endoscope drill. This image is showing that uh, uh, how can see the uh, configuration by the endoscope color. First, we ducking this V point, after then drill the cranial point like this shape, and uh, this spinal lamina angle like this, cranial, and uh, this caudal spinal, spinal lamina angle. And then can overcome the contractor side, and then drill the uh, uh, cranial uh, spinous process, then can pass over to the overcome the contractor side, then you can see that this shape of the contractor. And then finally, uh, we uh, can uh, decompress near all uh, uh, structures. Like you can see, like this first ducking, uh, cranial uh, lamina, uh, cranial spinal lamina angle, and caudal spinal lamina angle. 
yes, uh, interspinous ligament and ligament problem and the interspinous ligament. In the out, uh, uh, outing uh, approach, usually this uh, interspinous ligament and uh, uh, ligament problem uh, is not easy to distinguish because of that uh, if you uh, uh, this thing is this, uh, you should checking this uh, spinal lamina angle firstly, then we, you can see this interspinous and the ligament problem. Then you can pass over to overcome the contractor side. This uh, image, is, this video showing the same story, I will show again. Firstly, ducking during the cranial. Uh, splitting the outer layer of the ligament flabum and splitting the contractor side of the ligament flabum and the contractor, sorry, so fast. <laughs> and this is spiratal ligament flabum and contractor ligament flabum. You can see, yes, you can see this uh, ipsilateral, this ipsilateral cranial body point and this contractor outer layer of the ligament problem, this uh, cranial uh, V-point V-shape, and the contractor uh, ligament uh, lateral cest compression. Then sometimes if we approach the more deepest point of the contractor frame, uh, we, I already mentioned that we, uh, in, uh, in the cases, we approach from the contractor side, but unfortunately, in, uh, approach to the contractor frame in need a more small or uh, endoscope. Uh, because, because of that, uh, uh, we can use that uh, some initial time you, uh, using the some small scope and then approach the contract uh, at side. They can possible approach the contract at side, but. Uh, uh, approach to the contractor forming is needed more small work, uh, uh, endoscope uh, needed because of the, the I'm using the uh, channel switching technique. And also uh, in the uh, endoscope decompression of the uh, over the top, top technique, we can check the, this point. Uh, first, we're checking the three V point, and also uh, second point is the Detach the cranial ligament problem is very important. Uh, um, unfortunately, endoscope decompression in the post-operative MR image and follow-up MR image, uh, there is not, uh, uh, sometimes uh, there is uh, more less decompression compared to the open microscope. But if we detach the cranial ligament problem, we can uh, have a same clinical result with the open surgery because of that the cranial ligament problem uh, is very important to the uh, wee stenosis and the remnant of the stenosis because of the uh, I'm always uh, detach the cranial part of the ligament problem firstly uh, and also we can approach to the sub-laminar link and uh, we can use the channel, channel or channel switching technique. Now we will see the, some video image of the con uh, endoscope decompression. What? It's the same, it's a drill? No, nothing sir. Please go ahead. Order. Outer layer. Yeah. 
you can see this video on the YouTube, uh, my YouTube. And also, this is very important. Packing point here. Packing, packing to the uh, bony structures of low uh, lamina. Uh, close packing is uh, can decreasing the uh, uh, muscle bleeding. This is the third upper lamina, lamina. This crania. This coda. Contractor. Yes, you can see this video on the uh, neural spine. Uh, we already uploaded a sample video to the neural spine. This uh, paper we publish will June by the neural spine. Yes, uh, immediate postoperative MRI. And also, I already mentioned that if we approach the more deepest point, we can use the channel in ch channel technique or channel switching technique. Channel in channel meaning that the insert to the channel, a small channel to the uh, working channel. But channel switching meaning that the change the uh, small working channel by the same skin issue. But, uh, uh, I already mentioned the anatomical consideration, but uh, in the in the control report, uh, lateral foramen anatomy, most uh, important uh, drilling point is here. In the uh, beginning time, only central decompression beginning time, we we will drill to here. That is not sufficient because of that. If we approach to the contractor foramen, we should drill more sufficient uh, like this shape. I will show some uh, cases of contract uh, from uh, approach cases like this. Ducking and drilling and contract here. This contract from anatomy from approach uh, video. to the target, like this shape. And then, skin shun. First, stuck into here. You can see a small working channel, the, like with the Disectomy uh, scope. Then drilling to the interspin interspinal lamina angle area of the interspinous. Then approach after expose the uh, interlaminal ligament problem, then approach to the contractor side and drill the cranial part. Follow the uh, 
we don't have problem, we can approach to the contractor from that area. But uh, should the drill this area sufficiently? Then you can see here ship practical process. This is practical process. And also ligament problem can detach from the cranial part. Then we can estimate here the ejecting robot, but we should uh, uh, more bony structure to here to approach to the contractor frame on. Here, I think of it here. Then here is the final of the ligament problem. The final of the ligament problem attached to the contractor, the travel of pedicle. Then you can uh, insert the working channel to the frame on. Now, then we can see the ship article process and inch article process. After drilling to here, we can see the ejecting log route. Your disk here, uh, ejecting log route. After then, uh, some resection of the contractor disc. the clear to here. Then some osteopathic bony structures near to the frame. Here, exiting the root. You can see here, we did not retake the nerve or those are the ganglion. We uh, remember of the pathology indirect, uh, indirect uh, without retraction. You can see it near to the uh, contractor extra frame. And finally, we can see the, because of the, some of uh, patients have uh, some uh, standard point of the uh, part of the dorsal ganglion. They can possible uh, treat with the drill or with the force. Then you can see a final of the extra frame on. If you need uh, some drilling of the osteopathic bony structures of the ventral part of the dorsal ganglion, you can pass over from the contractor side. Finally, you can see the old decompression, uh, not only ligament or foreign ligament, but also bony structures from coder. Uh, uh, dorsal and ventral or uh, <laughs> in transpinal extra from the old compression is possible. Like this. And uh, finally, maybe uh, in the uh, using the some big uh, working channel, usually we can approach it like uh, to here, this axilla area of the contractor side. But uh, it can possible to approach more uh, around the here and decompression is possible. But so many patients of primary pathology need to decompress more widely like this. Uh, 
extra freeman extra freeman in that in this situation we should change the working channel small working channel and drilling of the some ventral part and can possible operate to the contractor freeman and extra frame is possible and also this contra uh, contractor just the real uh, less retractive approach and not touch the uh, those are the ganglion directly because of the in the transformer approach it needs some uh, direct uh, retraction of nerve can make us some post-operative uh tingle and sensation but also it did not uh, give the violation of the uh ipsilateral instability and lateral wedging because of that it can decrease the chance of the re stainless so we uh, uh, instability uh, in the uh, foramen pathology patient. Now, yes, in the cervical, uh, there are also uh, several points of the test clinical consideration. Before time, so many doctors uh, used uh, some uh, some garden attraction and some another attraction uh, uh, instrument to decrease in the interoperative bleeding. But fortunately, in the endoscope, it uh, pressures the bleeding with uh, like this only plus uh, traction technique. You can see this technique on the Damist. Damist, uh, you can see this technique. We can uh, possible uh, uh, the operation with uh, some decrease in the, uh, the operation, uh, interoperative bleeding. And also, we already knowing that uh, some uh, weak point in the cervical is very important to, to the king. And uh, from here, we can drill to cranial caudal, like this. First, we drill the cranial, and then caudal drill. And also, uh, in the uh, endoscope movement internal fusion, I'm uh, already mentioned that I'm using the uh, same with the conventional transform approach. But uh, endoscope uh, fusion, in my clinical experience, uh, endoscope fusion have uh, several advantages, especially decreasing the substance and uh, 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 some increase, uh, increasing this kite is more sufficiently. But uh, so many doctors ask to me how to protect the nerve. Uh, this is very important. But uh, yes, in like this, uh, process can possibly decompression. After then, after protect the nerve by the working channel. There is sufficient to, to protect the nerve. But unfortunately, this, uh, now this working channel is uh, uh, very small because of that, uh, cage, sufficient size cage is not inserted through the, uh, uh, now, now this, uh, working channel because, of, uh, because of that, I uh, made, uh, my own endoscopic, uh, King retractor uh, like this, then protect the uh, nerve, uh, follow the uh, previous uh, uh, operation uh, working channel. Then uh, ch after you can see here, after that, uh, this endoscope uh, working channel, and then decompress to here, then uh, change the uh, uh, my own uh, instrument uh, working channel and the retract and then insert the KG here at the insert the KG that is safe after then uh, withdrawn this work, uh, working channel then change the angle and then insert uh, it's meaning that my uh, end endoscopic KG insertion is blind only CM but uh, uh, so many doctors ask to me, you, maybe there's some danger to the uh, nerve damage. But fortunately, I already mentioned that uh, I have more than 100 cases. And I think that maybe more than one third, uh, 30 uh, level cases. But uh, I have no cases of nerve damage. Uh, don't worry. This is very good in uh, uh, retractor. But also some another... Uh, 
uh, technical consideration is that uh, I already mentioned that uh, I'm using the um, same with the conventional transformer moment uh, of fusion approach because it can possible like this all pathology of central stenosis and instability by together because of that uh, if we're using this this approach you can possible uh, the patient need a fusion surgery or can uh, near all patient can possible endoscope fusion surgery can possible and also some another question is that uh, it can possible to take a sufficient fusion that also so many doctors so ask uh, 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 about it. so many doctors believe that in this fusion will uh, maybe some low chance of fusion but uh, my uh, consideration is some different because uh, because of that. Uh, firstly, it can possibly insert the bone material sufficient in spite of the endoscopic working channel uh, with the fluid irrigation. And the second thing is that uh, now this uh, using the uh, 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 3D printing KG that have uh, already well known that. Uh, yeah, already uh, proven that uh, where fusion light, it means that with the, uh, and also we can use the endoscopic denudation technique, not damage the end plate with the 3D printing cage and insert the same bone materials can make a, a fusion light sufficiently. Here you can see the end plate denudation here. This is very important in the endoscopic uh, fusion surgery. Not damage to the end plate, only denudation. Uh, you can see here, uh, actually this patient is, uh, my case is of the open room interval fusion transformer. Uh, six months follow-up, so many patients have a uh, substance. Yes, fortunately, that patient also one year, three year follow-up. The patient fusion rate uh, substance, uh, um, uh, some uh, KG problem is uh, not so much. But anyways, uh, during the six months uh, follow-up, uh, you can see uh, so many patient uh, cases have a substance, but in the endoscopic decompression, you can see here, uh, in spite of the osteoporosis and you know, already the malposition, the KG, substance rate is so low. Sorry. This six months follow up, this another six months, six months follow up, this uh, uh, six months follow up. Uh, it's meaning that the, with the uh, preservation of the end plate, we can give the more uh, decreasing the chance of the substance rate. And you can see here, six months follow up, the substance rate uh, is so low. Where preservation, when where restoration of this kind. And also some other tips of the endoscopic fusion is a adhesive uh, disc releasing technique. This is also very important using the endoscope drilling. Disc drilling is very important to releasing the adhesive disc. You can see drill to the endoscope uh, and uh, disc to the disc, cutting the uh, already adhesive disc. And also another tip is that the end plate entry point drilling, yes, like this, end point entry point drilling can make a more easy denudation. Uh, actually, this endoscopic uh, adhesive disc releasing technique, uh, this is very uh, surprising result in my clinical result. You can see here, 
uh, can you see these cases? You can you believe that they can pass up to reduction of this kind by the endoscope cavity? Yeah, this case is not easy in spite of open surgery, but endoscopic endos, uh, drilling adhesive disc drilling technique using uh, we can take a, a very fantastic disc restoration, but also you can see here so severe. Uh, spon uh, high grade spondylitis this also can possible restoration sufficiently. You can see these cases in the uh, interdisciplinary neurosurgery journal. And also, some another tip uh, uh, advantage of the endoscopic uh, adhesive disc releasing technique is uh, some, it has a real, you can see uh, some scoliosis patient after operation, you can see. This question is possible. I don't know. I'm also sometimes surprised to the result. You can see uh, uh, cases, not only this, you can see some other cases. Because of that, uh, I believe that uh, uh, maybe we can possible the corrective surgery possible by the endoscope cali in the degenerative spinal scoliosis and I don't know, still don't know the hypothesis, but uh, scoliosis, degenerative scoliosis uh, have a good clinical result and restoration. This case is same with the uh, previous. And uh, you can see uh, degenerative scoliosis cases, also pretty. Is six months follow this post operative? This six months follow this another case is post operative and the six months follow. You can see uh, the this patient did not take a long level fusion, only a single level fusion, and but restoration is very nice. But sometimes, uh, so uh, multiple degenerative scoliosis cases need some multi level. Endoscope fusion can possible. Also, you can see here the well correction of the this uh, degenerative scoliosis septal operation. And also, this another cases of degenerative scoliosis. Here you can see. Yes, restoration is very nice. But uh, anyway, uh, endoscopic spine surgery uh, have a less uh, minimally invasive spine surgery and uh, have a less chance of infection and uh, less damage to the uh, nerve uh, structures. But uh, there have uh, several complications. But uh, I believe that the two point uh, complication is fairly uh, important. One point is uh, what. Uh, uh, nerve injury. Nerve injury came from radio frequency, sometimes uh, punchy, and uh, so, uh, some other point is that the water that injury like this. Because of that, uh, we should not see the center of the jaw after op uh, uh, open the uh, abdominal space uh, jaw, especially thoracic and cervical. And one another point is a dural tear. Fortunately, dural tear can be managed by the easily and in the endoscope guide by some dural patch technique, some clip technique. You can see a dural patch technique. This technique also published in the World Neurosurgery by me. You can see with that techniques in the World Neurosurgery. Yes, now I will uh, showing the clinical series before I will discuss, uh, I have a discussion time, 10 minutes. Dr. Menshi, it's okay? Yes, sir. Dr. Uh, Santos? Yeah, yeah. yeah please. So, so there are a few questions, basic questions regarding the ESLD, the lumbar ESLD. Uh, yes. So it's about their uh, docking points, entry points uh, are the same for the stenosis and bilateral decompression versus 
stenosis with unilateral symptoms. So, does it differ entry point? Yes, in my clinic uh, cases, uh, the approach point is the same because of that. Uh, uh, me and my fellows always recommend to backing to the bony structures of lower vertebral body, upper no, upper part of the lower vertebral body, and near close to the V point and facet. Because of that, that can decrease the interoperative bleed, muscle bleeding. And the second thing is can easily find the guide of the uh, bony structures because the facet joint can make a guide of the uh, bony drilling. Always okay. same. Okay. And second question is like how much uh, uh, laminotomy with the burr you you, uh, you do to expose the ligamentum flavum, upper margin of the ligamentum flavum. As you said, like uh, for input decompression in the MRI, we have to take out uh, as much as ligamentum flavum from the cranial side just to have a good uh, view on the MRA as compared to uh, microsurgical um, decompression? Yes, that is a very, very, very good question. Because of that, uh, actually, we should know that the endoscopic uh, spinal stenosis uh, uh, of the bony structures of the spinal stenosis, that is not origin, that is overgrowth bony structures. Because of that, uh, my drilling point is uh, uh, final finding the uh, some uh, thinning of the uh, cranial and caudal ligament from the bony structures near uh, exposure the atra. It's meaning that uh, that is a final of the li uh, ligament problem. If we firstly uh, see the uh, outer layer of the ligament problem in the severe stenosis case, usually there is not origin. You should yeah. drill more. And more, more color. But fortunately, if we drilling from the sublaminal uh, approaches, uh, the the original uh, bony structures drilling is not severe. Only some pathologic uh, drilling uh, by the sublaminal uh, point. Okay. okay. And uh, what would you advise? Like uh, doing the phlebectomy, uh, should we emphasize on in block removal of the ligamentum flavum, or we try to remove it piecemeal? Uh, it's, it's a big concern for the uh, initial uh, big beginners of the endoscopy because uh, for you it's very easy uh, to take out the ligamentum flavum as a whole in block and to separate it from all around. But for the beginners, it's not easy. Yes. Uh, that is also a good question. I firstly uh, mentioned about that uh, some piece, actually the uh, in, inside out meaning the piecemeal and outside meaning one block uh, resection of the ligament problem. But uh, unfortunately, one block resection of the ligament problem is not easy. Some you need uh, some learning and some training course. But piecemeal is very easy. But Unfortunately, the remain the cranial part of the ligament problem is very important point to release tenors and alignment of the symptom. Because of that, uh, if you have uh, some expert to the punchy uh, to the bony structures and some uh, removal of the remnant uh, cranial part uh, sufficient can possible, you can try the piecemeal. But uh, I. Because I'm also uh, pre uh, initial time I'm starting the some uh, some piecemeal section of the ligament problem and and that time I met uh, some so many uh, recent cases but after starting the uh, detaching the cranial part with the outside approach the recurrence rate is so so low so okay. recurrence rate okay and. Uh, 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 this is a case regarding uh, if we have a grade 1 or grade 2 uh, spondylolisthesis. Uh, so your decompression techniques differ a little bit as compared to the uh, uh, non uh condition? Uh, that was a very important point because of that. I think that maybe I have more than 1,000 cases of endoscope decompression. But uh, I'm also tried the uh, endoscope decompression of the grade 1 uh, spondylolysis with uh, some some instability cases, but uh, I believe that uh, that can preserve the functional segment sufficiently. But um, they still 
aggregation of the uh, spondylolysis not severe, but the, some of patients uh, have uh, their uh, recurred symptom in spite of the stems not severe. Because of that, nowadays I recommend uh, uh, some higher, uh, some more unstable uh, spondylolysis grade one or grade two cases with endoscopic fusion. But uh, the patient, in spite of the grade one spondylolysis with a stable, uh, uh, stable state, uh, that time we can try the endoscopic compression. Okay. And. Uh, a question regarding the tips for the easy and sufficient removal of the contralateral flavum and superior articular process. Actually, that is not easy. We need uh, some uh, learning. Uh, I uh, already mentioned that the, if, if you have uh, some experience of the contralateral process and uh, if you hope to approach the contralateral flavum, you should drill the cranial part of the contralateral Lavina, that is sufficient to, uh, drilling to there, that you can operate to the contractor side. And uh, in your videos, I have seen a very special instruments which you use for uh, ligamentum flavum separation from the bone. So, <laughs> what exactly is? <laughs> yeah. Yes. If, uh, uh, Actually, the uh, detachment of the cranial part of the ligament problem, if you uh, separate uh, from the uh, outer layer of the ligament problem and drilling the lamina, upper lamina, and uh, cranial part of the inner layer of the ligament usually detach only uh, drilling procedures. But if not, it's meaning that uh, if you uh, drilling the cr uh, contractor cranial part sufficiently, they can detach it easy. But drill, uh, the detachment is not easy, that meaning the uh, drilling is not sufficient. Okay. is not sufficient. Okay. Okay. So can we take... Uh, Dr. Kim, uh, there are a couple of questions from Brazil. Uh, can we take that or like we continue with the next topic? Uh, okay, uh, final is a clinical series, maybe. I have so many clinical series. Uh, after finishing the clinical series, okay. I will take okay. a, yes. Okay, so okay. we can go ahead with the talk and then we'll take the questions. Okay, thank you. Yes, this final time uh, uh, to this lecture, uh, this clinical series, yes. This 80-year female patient with the severe stenosis, maybe this case uh, is a good indication of the outside in approach because uh, uh, if we drill all outside of the ligament problem, then can possible easily the remover of the inner side. But if we approach firstly from inside out, that is very dangerous. This contractor side. We will see again, because this is very important. This uh, ipsilateral ducking point, drilling the ipsilateral lamina, this uh, V point of the cranial, this V point of the coda, and the, over the contractor side, and the splitting the legal and the problem of the contractor outer layer. And the drilling the contractor lamina, extractor lamina, and detach it from the cranial. Now of the extractor, contractor of the uh, inner, not leaving the problem. Then take out, then can see this image. This also can pass over in the multi-level cases. This uh, one to facet, the sister two, three, three, four, four, five stems cases. Uh, it's the same the out our in approach. In the post approach, we can see this image. Only two scansion. No operation time is two hours forty minutes. Yes, this case is very interesting cases. You can see here. The, uh, this patient have a form uh, paracentral 
uh, for one extra for one and the thickening of the rebound problem. Yes, you can possible to approach it from the transformer and then can possible resection of this point. But uh, unfortunately, the approach is not easy. And also, because of that, uh, some maybe of this uh, lateral recess thickening of ground problem is not easy. But if we approach from the contractor side, we can see, you can see uh, the contractor, cranial detachment of the contractor ground problem and the contractor frame one. This contractor disc. Contractor to Salto Angolian. Then post operative view, you can see this image and also six months follow uh, MRI can see not violation to here, not unstable and well decompression and well restoration of the spinal canal. This also very interesting cases, near similar cases, central stenosis and formula, extra formula and paratal cases also can possible by the contractor approach like this. You can see here, contractor, frame one. And the section of the limb of the contractor of this here, contractor extra frame one. And this uh, dosal ganglia. You can see this image after operation. And this also, some, uh, this case is also. Uh, degenerative scoliosis and formula stenosis, lateral frame and extra frame. And also approach from the contractor side. This dosal root ganglion. And drilling to here and drilling to here. This uh, uh, those are this ventral part, all the compression and after operation. This actually, this uh, uh, I am naming this is triple crush because of that. Uh, this uh, nerve root compression from here and ventral and those are together. Three uh, nerve root compression together, triple crush. And after, after operation, you can see this image. And one year later, uh, actually, I followed this patient more than one year. But the patient they have no pain still, in spite of this, this severe uh, degenerative scoliosis. In the thoracic, I already mentioned that if we hope to uh, remove this point safely, you can see here this drilling the outer point. Tip of the ligament, catch by the ligament problem, then detach and take out by the one piece like this. Then can take out this images. And also this case also very interesting. Uh, after starting the endoscopic decompression for thoracic uh, safely, you can meet us, will meet so many patients. I'm also meet so many patients after Thirteen endoscopic compression. Uh, this patient is 54 year male patient with uh, cervical neck pain, uh, back pain, leg pain. Uh, but the, the patient unfortunately uh, treated only cervical, and the patient um, received the cervical fusion surgery and shoulder treatment. But uh, the patient pathology from uh, from thoracic oil repo. Uh, actually, this patient received the, the uh, thoracic operation two times. First time is this 9, 9 10, 10, 11. Second time is a polar and some another level. Anyway, after operation, the patient's uh, pain disappeared completely and the, the patient returned to his life. Uh, 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 return his life completely. You can see here uh, after operation and 
when you're following in six months following the image, you can see the some where the section of the uh, classified ligand flower, ossified ligand flower. This case, another case is of the uh, quadriparasis patient, and this uh, those are uh, classified ossified ligand problem and ventral classified uh, disc. Because we can possible decompression to here and insert the working channel to here and this, uh, this could uh, drilling also can pass over. This you can see the some decompression and change the working channel, small working channel and insert to, to here during the uh, calcified bony uh, disc mat uh, material by the endoscope. The patient first visit to my clinic with the quadriparsis with a very severe walking disturbance. And after operation, you can see when you're below, the patient walking is improved so much. Because the patient with uh, quadriparsis is sustained more than three years. This uh, quadriparsis improved sufficiently, but still remained. And also, uh, outside in the compression campus in the cervical, you can see uh, the so severe disc. And also, this patient has uh, some pedicolectomy to here and the limbar of the disc. disc. You, I will show again. Here, drilling of the ducking viewpoint, drilling cranial, drilling coda, and drilling the uh, pedicle with the then limbar of the disc. Here, here pedicle. Some other cases also. This C three four. We point this cranial and this coder. Cranial laminotomy and the coder laminotomy now. And the uh, laminotomy for uh, pedicle here, here pedicle area. After during the pedicle, you can approach to uh, the target point by the uh, working channel. Then you can schedule the disc, can pass in spite of the upper level. And the after operation, this can the completely. This among other cases, this case is also similar. You can see this case is also some uh, formula stairs with uh, some dosal and ventral pathology together because of the, this patient. First, for anatomy, then expose the pre-point uh, pedicle, the compression to here, then drilling the vertebra, uh, lower vertebra here, then you can see after operation, you can see there's some uh, open uh, front anatomy and drilling point to here can pass over. Right after pedicle, uh, partial pedicleotomy. And also, cervical decompression is possible in, uh, especially posterior pathology the cases uh, can pass up. Uh, can possible endoscopic uh, unilateral approach, bilateral decompression, but uh, cervical has a more very uh, um, high chance of cold damage because of that. Uh, should not should keep the ligament problem in the final step of the take out the ligament problem. You can see here. Always should finish the drilling to the, uh, the uh, attachment of the ligand problem, and finally take out the ligand problem by one piece.
then you can see the code then the patient can take out good clinical result i wish next also similar yes uh yes the first time we can see this patient this uh, code in your patient this three point this cranial now the codal drilling cranial move all the contractor side cranial and uh, during the contractor other part, spinal lamina angle here, and over the contractor now. Should keep the ligament problem in the final stage. And to finally detach the ligament uh, resection, remove of the ligament problem. Preoperative, the patient quadri paralysis. This paralysis. One week later, and the six months later, yes. Yes, nowadays endoscopic spinal surgery has been steadily developed, uh, developed so much, and also it is being applied in the all area of the degenerative spinal disease. But maybe in order to develop, uh, develop and uh, popularize the endoscopic spinal surgery, we should we, and we must always worry about the uh, next uh, three points. One point is that uh, should uh, do, doing the successful uh, surgery and treatment. Second thing is safe surgery, and third thing is the research and development. Should we should keep uh, develop um, ongoing for uh, these three categories by the endoscopic spinal surgery? Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, Doctor Lim. Mm -hmm. uh, can I can I ask uh, the questions? Yes. So there's a question from Dr. Uh, Ankar Jindal uh, regarding this uh, your drilling techniques, particularly in the adhesive disc release uh, while preparing the end plates and the lumbar and uh, end plates. So he just wants to know more about the, uh, your technique of uh, adhesive disc release. Sorry, the question is some blocking. The communication is some uh, interrupted. Can you repeat the question again? Okay, okay, okay. Can you can you hear me now? Yes. So there's a question regarding the technique of uh, disc adhesive release uh, doing the lumbar endotelium. Yes. Uh, so so how do you do it? Some somebody wants to know uh, in more detail about it. More details. Uh, can you can you? Uh, um, Elaborate the process of uh, drilling the end plates. Uh, somebody wants to know. There's a question from. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, uh, but uh, firstly, it protect the nerve with the uh, working channel, and then uh, it means that uh, I I use the, some joint next system and the, some insert working channel and protect the nerve root uh, after rotation of the working channel and drilling. Uh, uh, touch to the disc intervertebral disc and the drilling to the insert to deeper and then cutting drill and then river of the, the some disc part of it. after then some clear of the end the end plate entry point of the end plate then drill to there some then can uh, more clear and expose the uh, starting point of the end plate and the whatever by the attachment point then detach it in addition to there. Okay, so uh, the question like, uh, what are the best indications for endotelic procedures, like uh, in your opinion? Endotelic? Yeah, lumbar endotelic. Uh, 
Uh, best indication, uh, <laughs> yes, it's the same indication with the uh, uh, conventional open uh, lumbar interval fusion. Uh, best indication will be the um, some instability spondylolisthesis with the spinal stance will be the best indication. And uh, uh, where, uh, where you, uh, what are the contraindications like uh, if you want to put it other way? Contraindication? Yeah, so would you like to do in grade, high grade uh, spondylolisthesis, uh, uh, like grade 3, grade 4? Uh, unfortunately, in Korea, we have not so many cases of grade uh, 4 cases. But okay. uh, in the endoscopy uh, uh, fusion, grade 2 is possible, grade 3, I don't know. But uh, because uh, in Korea, usually the patient grade uh, less than grade 2. Uh, okay. Is so much. Okay. So, uh, Kim sir, I wanted to ask a question. How do? What would you recommend for people like us to speed up two-level decompression? Because it takes a lot of time, and uh, you do it very fast. So, how we can speed up the duration of two-level decompression? Uh, duration? Me? How we can speed up the duration? Speed <laughs> up. There is some depend on the. Uh, uh, I'm using the outside an approach and some uh, doctor Lim and some other doctors inside of out approach. But uh, I recommend to my fellows to you speed up your uh, operation of the endoscopic compression. You training the endoscopic tray. Yeah. This that is. That's very important. Endoscope drill training is very important. And what what is your protocol for dural tear management? Dural tear management, uh, I always apply the uh, patch blocking technique. You can read that uh, technique in the world in your surgery. Okay. Such blocking. Uh, I I have so many because I have already more than one thousand cases. I'm also met met so many cases of endoscopic tear cases. But uh, one case is convert to two 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 three cases maybe in, at the initial time. But uh, recently I have no convert to the open uh, because I always try the patch blocking technique. Okay. Mr. Kim, Vyapak is asking a question, one of of yours, Vyapak is asking a question, is that the same bent probe what uh, you both people have uh, developed and uh, what you are using? Uh, bent probe uh, not developed by the company, by, uh, it made by my hand. <laughs> uh, that is what he, was, he is mentioning, that it is the same bent probe what you both were using in 2016 when he was there with you? Yes, still I use the same bent probe. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. only one time okay. break. <laughs> and uh, one question from my side. Uh, uh, there are so many techniques for the uh, minimally invasive fusion procedures, particularly recent, uh, like, like there's a controversy regarding the use of OLIF, uh, TLIF, PLIF. Uh, they all have endoscopic versions nowadays. So, what is the advantage of uh, your uh, uh, indoor TLIF techniques? Like, uh, it's more like conventional TLIF, the same, same technique, same approach, but uh, done through the endoscope. And so, uh, how do you, like, uh, how does it differ from the transcambian and the uh, OLIF? And what are the advantages of this technique? Yes, uh, there, there is a very good question. I already mentioned that uh, uh, why I tried, uh, I'm doing the endoscope tr conventional uh, transformer. Uh, because actually in the uh, uh, segment, the spinal segment, the most uh, uh, safe, uh, wide, safe and wide space is transformer area. At, uh, if we can expose that area sufficiently, we can Doing the all arrangement in spite of the cases and yes, so many pathology can pass over by, by only that approach. Because of that, uh, the, uh, using that technique, uh, your indication can pass over widening more widely. It means that my operation recently, my fusion surgery have no open surgery or endoscope fusion. 
But also, that is first. The second thing is that the end plate uh, preparation is very important to decreasing the substance and to increasing the fusion rate. There is a real uh, the trans transformer route is real advantage to that uh, point. Okay? Yeah. And uh, one uh, question from my side, like uh, while uh, doing the cervical endoscopic disectomy, uh, uh, posterior approach, uh, you told us about this, uh, uh, this one, this pedic uh, pedicotectomy and the partial vertebrectomy uh, for the ventral approach for the, some uh, central part of the disc as well as uh, uh, the paramedial and uh, uh, foraminal disc. Uh, so I just want to know more about no, it. No, 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 no. Central part of this question is not uh, easy. But uh, it, we can try that uh, for the central disc, but I, I, I'm not recommend because uh, usually cent if the central but uh, this could have uh, some symptom or some cold compression, then need uh, some, uh, I recommend the uh, anterior approach of the open surgery. Because uh, some traction can make uh, some damage to the nerve uh, or cord. Uh, my indication is uh, some frame on and paracentral point. So, uh, do you advise partial pedicolectomy in all the cases of cervical PSCD? Uh, PSLD, yeah. oh, you mean the endoscopic decompression? Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, decompression patients usually have no foraminal pathology, so many patients, because they did not need a, a pedicolectomy, only decompression. But pedicolectomy uh, has uh, some advantage in the approach to the foramen, uh, uh, some foraminal stenosis and foraminal disc, because of the so many dis uh, cervical disc located to the foraminal uh, area. Because by doing that, we can make more space and can avoid the retraction to the exiting nerve root as well as dura, and it's easy to enter into the axillary area to take out the disc. So, so that's what I'm asking. Yes, it's correct. Because of that, the uh, frame approach has uh, some advantage. But central decompression is uh, have no advantage possible. by the pedicolectomy. Okay, okay. And... Uh, uh, there is a recent uh, introduction of trench technique uh, where you take out some, uh, make a trench in the ventral part of the vertical part, dorsal part of the vertical body and uh, can assess to some extent, uh, uh, not exactly the central, but paracentral sort of disc. Is it possible? What? There is a new disc. Okay. Uh, there is a technique known as trench technique where they go posteriorly and uh, take out the pedic little bit of pedicle and enter into the vertebral body and take out little bit of vertebral body to make a trench and from where they can manipulate the instruments to take out the fragment uh, located in the paracentral or little bit central. So is it possible? <coughs> yes, it's possible to the central. I'm also sometimes approaching near close to the central, but uh, I think that in the cervical there's some danger because of okay. that. If okay. the pathology mainly or originate from the center, uh, I recommend to the anterior, anterior approach. approach. Thanks, yeah. thanks, thanks. And uh, Manish, any other questions would you like to ask? Uh, I think there are a couple of questions. Yeah, you can ask. I, I can't see them today. Okay, so probably they are asking regarding the uh, annular sealing technique. Um, I think in last talk, Kim has mentioned it beautifully during interlaminar technique. So, uh, Dr. Kim, somebody is asking regarding annular sealing technique. Annular Yeah. Annular sealing technique? Yeah, yeah. Um, there is but a that, uh, that discussed uh, last week. Last year, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We have discussed yeah. it already, yeah. Last week. And, uh, and Vyapak is asking one more question. Uh, Vyapak is asking uh, what instrument you use for uh, end plate denudation? End plate denudation, bent probe. Okay. Bent probe. <laughs> bent probe. Bent probe. Yeah. I think Vyapak and. is too much interested in your bent probe. <laughs> because uh, during the Vyapak stay, uh, that time have no fusion surgery, endoscope fusion surgery. <laughs> Or is there a question from Dr. Anurag? Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. 
uh, can you can you read it i cannot read that actually okay so the question is uh, is there any actual ligamentum flavum hypertrophy or it is the stacking of ligamentum flavum due to decreased disc height what is there an actual ligamentum flavum hypertrophy or it is the stacking of ligamentum flavum due to decreased disc height uh you ask about what is the uh, first yeah yeah <laughs> uh maybe it uh, uh, there is a question about the biomechanics actually in the spine uh the uh path some uh, instability force is starting from the uh, subluxation of the facet uh facet uh, after then uh, loading the uh, disc after then uh, making uh, some uh, guarding around the structure of the muscle and ligament problem because of that uh, uh, this kind of weakness first is touching the uh, uh, before ligament problem thickening but this kind of decreasing is uh, some related to the thickening of the ligament problem okay. can you understand yeah 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 there is one more question from dr hatem again your student he is asking how do you move your beveled cannula in contralateral side the tip is located in posteriorly or how do you place uh, your tip beveled tip in contralateral decompression beveled beveled cannula yeah uh, uh question again please uh, how do you move your beveled cannula mm. in contralateral decompression where uh, the yes. exactly is located yes uh in my clinical uh, in my operation maybe if the patient need a central decompression and operate to the contractor side the time first we using the some big working channel after then uh, operate to the contractor side at that time uh change uh, the small working channel but if the patient need a contractor recess and contractor frame on the time firstly using the small working channel but over the contractors are using the baby firstly open the, the taking the spinal lamina anger and drilling that area and open that area of the interspinal uh, ligament problem area then insert to the uh, baby uh, baby uh, working channel and then rotate can you can you understand yeah thank you thank you thank you uh, the last question from uh, dr hatem he is saying what is your personal opinion regarding unilateral bipodal endoscopy this is from hatem egypt uh, <laughs> uh please uh, don't ask it to me <laughs> okay <I see. laughs> yes because of that Sorry. there is some uh some philosophy philosophy uh, it's different yeah philosophy Yes. So, uh, yes, so one, uh, privately. Okay. So I have a question like, uh, how do you do reduction uh, in case of uh, endotelium? Uh, uh, so before preparing the disc plate or after uh, after that, and how do you do reduction high grade spondylolisthesis? What? You mean uh, the, yeah. Reduction, reduction, and uh, cases of spondylolisthesis and the uh, endotelial procedure. How do you do that? Uh, I'm also uh, recently I prepared uh, three full paper of the endoscope fusion. One is a uh, increasing this kite. One is a uh, high grade spondylolisthesis cases, and one is a uh, scoliosis, <laughs> but degenerative scoliosis. But uh, in my experience, we can possible. Uh, doing the end of fusion more than uh, grade two uh, some of cases of grade three can possible because they can uh, endoscopic uh, or they see would disc releasing uh, can make uh, some increasing disc height and uh, have uh, some chance of restoration of uh, spondylolisthesis but uh, i have so many cases of uh, grade two cases more than grade two so reduction is always necessary or sometimes you just do in situ arthrodesis no 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 uh, restoration uh, they can restore the so sufficiently for well, you can see the previous my uh, slide uh, in spite of the so severe grade 2 and high collapse cases they restore yeah. you completely i i have so many cases restored you completely 
Okay. Just so we should feel nice. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, I think there are a couple of questions. Uh, one uh, viewer wants to ask, how do you measure the disk height uh, during the leaf? Uh, you Try. ask cage about size. the cage size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah size. Yeah. Oh, yes, cage size can uh, pass the same. Uh, insert uh, some uh, room or two yeah. in, in disk space and rotate and checking the size. Okay. Yeah. And now, now this, uh, I use the KG uh, T2 13 millimeter. Okay. How many cases I recently I use the 30 millimeter? So, but the patient the pre operative pre this kind to less than eight, and after operation they needed a 13 millimeter. So, do you do any kind of neuro monitoring uh, during the endotelium? No, no, no. I have no cases of neuro monitoring because I, I already mentioned that uh, uh, my uh, own uh, uh, retractor, intradiscal retractor, have a very safe. Okay. Have, okay. have not the nerve damage. So it's always necessary to uh, do you use all the time titanium cage or maybe we can use PK also. Oh. Uh, actually, in the characteristics of the endoscope fusion is uh, some related to the water irrigation because of that. Uh, if we possibly use the, some three D printing cage, because okay. some pick. Uh, I heard I know that uh, some so many doctors already tried the pick cage using the endoscope. Uh, endoscope water irrigation, the fusion rate is so less. Okay. Um, and so what is the uh, 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 pre-operative work uh, 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 workup before uh, endotelis? Like, uh, do you do all time BMD and CT scan uh, before doing the? Yes. BMP and CT scan and MRI and whole spine X-ray and all they check the EMG also all they check and also BMP, uh, 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 bone mineral density BMD also very important but unfortunately we can try the uh, bone cement augmentation in the osteoporosis patient because of that uh, uh, in spite of the so severe osteoporosis Severe osteoporosis, uh, there's no problem, of the, uh, no contraindication of the endoscope fusion surgery. I think today also we continued for two hours like previously when we planned for one hour because a lot of people are uh, eager to ask questions and listen to Professor Kim. What? <laughs> like previous day, uh, we yes. planned for one hour and uh, it continued to